something like freedom. I'd like to tell you that freedom came to me, that it came in the form of a girl or a poem, but really, freedom came to me in the form of a little, tiny dog. And an alley that my ex and I had no place being in, but found ourselves one fine San Francisco day. My ex, he didn't want me to go near it. It looks really hungry, he'd say. And the little beast kept growling and gnashing her teeth against a heap of trash, but I'm a gambling man by nature. I got closer and discovered four tiny puppies clenched against her and two dead ones under a newspaper headline that read, with doing your best just isn't good enough. And with my last piece of food in the whole world, a piece of beef jerky, she let me save her that day. And it felt good to be good. But the problem was I had a hard time making that habit stick. And in another day, I was back to all the speed that didn't make me fast for anything but made it easy to forget. And my ex was my dealer. And the puppies were adopted, but the little dog went home with us. And for a moment, everything felt simple. She looks hungry, he would always say. And no matter how much I gave her, it was never enough, especially for something so small, especially for something so delicate. Dogs are the worst judges of character because they will love anyone and do anything to get what they need. And I guess that's why I found myself to be one. I can't keep you anymore, he'd say. You're doing too much, he'd say. This is bad for business, he'd say. And when I thought it would be time to leave, he'd do the reverse and invite me to stay. When I thought there was no arguing left, he'd give me the reasons. And there were moments I think he felt bad for giving in to me, or maybe he just felt sorry for me. But I had become so good at not caring. Just a little more always fell from my lips after I had just shot someone. As I graduated from speed to heroin to taking and never asking, he'd try to make it all stop. Try to hide it from me. Try to get me to slow down. But you made me this way, I'd say. I'll hide, I'll go down to the tender line and I'll do what I have to do, I'd say, and I don't need you, I'd say. Then he'd grab hold of a conscience or his anger at my thinking I could leave him and lock me in his bedroom so I couldn't further damage myself without him. And I'd beat the walls and claw the door. The best way to train a dog, he'd say, is to break them. And I would fall to the floor, losing all track of time, thinking that the poison would eventually just spill out of me. She looks like she's carrying her skeleton in someone else's, he'd say. Are you feeding her? He'd say, she looks so hungry. And then the door would open, and he'd get on the floor with me and finally deliver me the mustache. Don't look like such a caged animal, he'd say. As we got high one last time, always one last time, you're too pretty for that. And I'd always do a little extra, afraid I'd sweat or shit it out. I wanted to be ready for the next time. And then he'd just leave me alone for a while. And then finally the little dog would find me. And she'd been hiding under the bed the whole time. And we'd climb into each other, all of our scars touching, and I'd be covered in her kisses and small pleas. He finally dumped me. He told me my stuff and the dog could stay, but I, I had to go. And I did a show, and all the drugs I had on me, and some people who really hated my guts found me on the floor of some bar's bathroom, and their hate turned to pity. And they called another ex, one I'd really done a number on, and he came for me. And I was homeless, and he gave me a home. And I was sick, and in withdrawal from all the junk, and he let me convulse on his floor, and all my hair as I puked in his trash can, and he made me lots and lots to eat, because he never wanted me to go hungry. Though dogs don't discriminate, they are very good at trusting their instincts. They have no problem protecting and dying for what they love. Maybe that's why God, spelled backwards, is dog, my friend said. And it was a good enough reason for me to start believing in one, and this former lover turned friend took me back, which is no surprise to me now. He worked at an animal shelter. He rescued <laughs> dogs for a living with a little bit of chicken and a fistful of patience. And we went back to the old house to get my stuff, but all I took was the little dog. I was starting to think you were never going to come back for her, he said. I didn't know what I was going to do with her. She peed in my bed while you were gone. And I spent the next few months, then years, moving in small steps with a couple trash bags of clothes and poems, and yes, the little dog. But I always felt fed. I always felt full. So I'd like to tell you how freedom came in the form of redemption or a second chance, or yes, even a poem. But it was actually four legs, two little brown eyes, and a wet nose. And somehow, we two dogs managed to keep the pack together. Woo!